Well, I'm still in the process of disassembling this to see if there is anything that we can use. So far there hasn't been a great deal, a little bit here and there. All the cross framing and floorboards are totally rotted. I'd like to get these two sideboards up off of all this other stuff, pallet, my little dolly underneath, these old wire spoked wheels, and see if I can't get this up onto a pair of sawhorses. I've got some straps underneath. Since the cross members are rotted and broken, I put a four by four across here where my overhead come alongs are gonna pull up so it doesn't just crush it. And I've also got a strap underneath the back end and see if I can't lift this up and get some of this non-essential debris stuff out from underneath here. hanging up on this iron here. This iron should go up instead of down. It's hanging on this kind of a corral pole here. There we go. See that should go up like so. A little low on this side yet. Hitting that tire. There we go. Well, in the owner's memory, this wagon has always been on this undercarriage. It's got a steel axle. I don't know what benches these wire spoke wheels are. Don't know anything about that era of stuff. Bolted to the axle. This is kind of an interesting style of a clamp to go to what would be the reach. These would be considered the reach hounds on a wagon. But he assumes that when it was newly purchased that it probably had a wood running gear and that's what we're going to put back on it. But as he grew up, this is what his memory was. It was a two-wheel cart underneath this sheep wagon body. And all this is just going to go away. Maybe I'll give this a quick try and see if it'll come loose before I just cut it off. tougher on the second one.
Well, as I was cleaning up the mess on the floor here, I had a friend stop by and we got to looking at these wheels. Like I say, I don't know anything about automotive in this era. That's just not my strong suit. So he got to looking it up and he found that these wheels are a Ford wheel from the year of either 33 or 34. So that was kind of interesting. So the, what the owner speculated was probably pretty true that when this wagon was built initially, it probably had wood wheels under it. What happened to them, who knows? But sometime in the mid 30s, 40s on, before his childhood, it was changed over to these wheels, axle, and to the style of undercarriage that it had presently. Well, the back of the sheep wagons has somewhat of a frame left intact, but this cross rod is the main part that's keeping these sides from splaying out. The front, however, all this is gone, and as I let this down, it wants to just lay this side over, so I'm going to take and tie this together. Try to keep that from falling completely off to its side, at least out of control. I may actually have to cut a board here, put under this to prop it up. It's just got too much weight going off to the side, about four foot. This will help stabilize this. I actually could take a little more support here. A little tipsy, but maybe that'll work. And then I'm going to add a little backup here just in case. So in the memory of the owner, this was purchased from Red Lodge, which is 26 miles south of us. He said he was purchased by his grandfather, so it would have put it back there in that turn of the century time frame. And like I say, probably had a wooden undercarriage under it. But as I kind of play with this, it starts to talk to me. You all know this story by now. I begin to watch and understand a little bit about the personality of this wagon. My speculation is, for a number of different reasons that I'm going to show you, that this was probably a farm wagon that was converted into a sheep wagon. Well, as I look at the sides of this wagon, this is the original sideboard, and this top, maybe three inches or so, looks to be like it was added on to extend it, which would make sense. This bottom board is about 16 inches, and oftentimes these sideboards for sheep wagons are that 19, 20 inch area. So 16 and another three, plus a little shim here to accommodate for the irons, at the top of this seat bench here would make this sideboard 20 inches. And this other side is done the same way as well. This still has the bench board on top. So you can see the original sideboard, and this is the extension, and then the bench board here. So we end up with our 20 inches, and this iron goes through this joint right here. And on the outside, you can see that they put a plate here to cover that joint where the addition was made. And then we can see the same done as well on this side. There's a cord around here for the bench seat, and then this plate that's right over this joint. Well, in past videos, you've watched me build these wagon boxes, and this cross rod is very common to keep these two sides solid usually with a grain board that would allow opening to dump the grain. Well, this rod here wasn't originally in this place. As we get in here a little closer, you can see the original hole for this rod was down here, which it would have been in line with the original sideboard. 
But when this was extended up, in my speculation, to turn this into a sheep wagon, this rod was moved up to allow for some framework here to have this hinge door that would access into this grain bin area. So I'm beginning to see some of these construction styles that seem to indicate to me that originally this was a grain box wagon that was taken and adapted and transferred into a sheep wagon. There's one thing about these sheep wagons that is intriguing to me is they all have their own personalities. Oftentimes these were made at the home ranch to their own different desires and personal needs and you know they were very personal wagons. You know the sheep wagon is thought to have originated in the state of Wyoming but many of these were built on local blacksmiths or home ranches and so they all have little different designs. This little latch here for the door that looks like it would have fit right about in here. That's some blacksmith's custom design for a door latch. You know, you're probably not going to find another one that'll have one like this. The style of the tin work behind where the stove will be unique to this wagon. Custom fit around this box here that will take the pots and pans. It has this bevel that comes from this box that's speculation. This is where the pots and pans were. It comes down to the bench specific to this wagon. Now we know that this is where the kitchen cabinet set. And on the side of this box where the pans would have set is a couple of cleats where evidently there was a board that slid in here. Then it went down to the kitchen cabinet and there's cleats on the side of that cabinet just like this to receive that. So as this wagon was going down the road in transport, going from one camp to the next, they could put stuff back in here, and just like the RVs today, it's gonna keep it from rattling and falling on the floor. This front wall where the bed would be, oftentimes you'll see a solid frame across, and the door will either be a single door or a double door in the center. This one, when they built it, it was hinged on the side. What the other side looks like, I'm not quite sure yet. That's still yet to be revealed. But that was their style when they built this camp for their needs. And on many sheep camps, you'll see when this was framed out, they will have a board that will slide underneath the bed and then come out with a drop leg that that would be their table much like what you would see a breadboard made where you could slide it in out of sight and then bring it out as was needed. In this case, this table or breadboard working station is on the side with the kitchen cabinet. Because the shepherd would stand at the door to drive the team as he drove the wagon, there's two different styles oftentimes that you find that the brake assembly would come up. Many would have a trap door here with a removable handle and there's some that would come in the side here with the ratchet up on top. Well, I don't see the application remnants of where that ratchet was. It doesn't seem to be here. Possibly it was on top. And with this board being rotted and gone, perhaps that's where the ratchet went. So even as decayed as this is, it's still telling us some about what it was like in its original day. And that's the whole goal is to bring this back to what this wagon was. It'll be the challenge to save as much as this as we can. And my thoughts at this point, upon confirmation with the owner, I don't anticipate that I'm gonna sandblast the iron and paint that and clean that all up. The goal is to retain what we can of what it was originally in the style of whoever built it in Red Lodge. So the next step in my goals that I'm anticipating, I'm going to unbolt these irons, take all the nuts off of these side irons, and lay these sides down. The cross frames and the floorboard are completely shot, so we're going to start out with a new replica for that, and that will allow these irons to come into a solid frame, get these to stand up straight, and I'll dismantle these and do whatever patching I have to do. We'll just kind of play with it as we go. It's, it's going to be kind of a conversation between this wagon and myself to figure out where we're going to end up. So when I introduced this project last week, there were a number of you that asked the question in the comment section, what happened to the mud wagon? What's happening with the hotel? 
Well, the hotel is on hold a bit. I'm accumulating supplies, but it was preempted by my barn project out on our little playground. I already had that scheduled, materials bought and all that, so this summer was dedicated to that. Next summer, I'm anticipating that I'm going to put more of my focus on that hotel building. As far as the mud wagon goes, when I finished building the body to where it was, prior to doing any paint and upholstery and assembling it with the thorough braces onto the undercarriage, I contacted the grandson that is going to end up driving this mud wagon. Visited with him and he has been watching the process and he appreciated all the pictures that were brought to the table so we could see how this was. He was very intrigued by the whole process. But some of those decisions he desired would be more of a family decision as far as what color do we paint it and what do we do for the upholstery, that type of deal. Well, that's been four months ago and I haven't heard anything back yet as far as those decisions. So that mud wagon is on hold as well until I hear something. So that got put to the back room, uh, gave me opportunity to build these two 10 foot tall logging wheels, which were now finished, short of shipping. And this has been in the wings, kind of on the back burner for a number of years. So I decided to bring it in until they decide. I have no lack for things to do. If they want to take their time and decide, uh, that's their prerogative, I guess. The disadvantage to me is I end up storing it. So anyway, that's the status on this mud wagon project. It's on hold at the time being. So until I know a little bit more, I'm going to tackle this sheep wagon for this winter. Hopefully it won't take all winter. I've got a lot of other projects of my own personal projects that I want to bring in and start working on when I get these done. Anyway, this is where we're headed for the time being. Appreciate you following along, and as always, thanks for watching.